What's going on, fifth grade? This is your fifth grade teacher, Mr. Dooley for ELA, and we are on day three, and we're going to be covering a warm-up before we actually get into the new content. So, you've got four words on the board, and we talked about singular and plural nouns yesterday. Put those together, what do you think we're about to do? Well, we're about to turn these singular nouns into plural nouns. We've got country, we've got ox, we've got bicycle, and we've got bush. So, I'm going to let you pause the video, take a minute, and either on a piece of paper or with your out loud spelling skills, I want you to turn these singular nouns into plural nouns. So I'll let you pause and do that now. Welcome back. We're going to go ahead and go over these. I'm going to get a different color. I'm good to go. I'm going to start with country. Now, country, an ends in a Y. And if you follow the rules, you have to drop the Y and add IES to the end of it. There's a chart on Squalogy that you can use that I put up to help you review those rules that you learned back in about third or fourth grade. So country comes countries. Let's get bicycles. Bicycles is pretty easy. All you have to do is add an S. So B I C Y C L E S. No problem. Now ox, I keep putting ox because it's one of the more complicated ones. Ox is going to be oxen. And that's O X. And then you want to add that E N. Again, that's one of those special plural words that pretty much just add something kind of weird and random to the end. And cactus is the same way. And cactus would be cacti. Let's do bushes. Now, if you have H at the end, S-H or C-H, in this case it's S-H, you want to just do bush with E-S on the end. And that's our warm-up. Again, just making sure that we're keeping an idea of how to get these plural nouns turned, or keep these plural nouns and singular nouns in our heads. And if we have to turn a singular noun to a plural noun, we know how to do that. So, we get out of this and head on to the power. Alright, so today we are covering a fairly, I, I, I'd be safe to say this is kind of more of a complicated topic. We're talking about possessive nouns. Now, when it comes to nouns, nouns can show ownership of things. They can also show ownership of qualities. For instance, Mr. Dooley's eyes are blue. Mr. Dooley's has to be spelled a certain way for it to make sense. But let's look at our examples. John's feet are cold. Whose feet? John's. And if you, look, if you take a look at John's, it has an apostrophe S. That apostrophe is what's going to show ownership. Let's move on to a not, a not a proper noun, but just a regular noun, like store. The store's prices are great. Whose prices? Stores. And you know that because there is a possessive apostrophe between the E and the S. That's just a quick little, quick little rundown, but let's see this more in depth. Why don't we? Let's see. We got possessive nouns again. They are written differently depending on if the noun is plural or singular. That's why I wanted to review those plural and singular nouns before. I've got a chart here. This chart is a really good opportunity for you to pause and take a good look at this chart. I'm going to go through it pretty, pretty quickly, but again, you should be able to watch this video again in case you miss something. If you look at Rita, Rita has a book about baseball. That sentence, Rita isn't possessive. There's no apostrophe S. Now, we do know that Rita does have a book that's about baseball, but in that form, just Rita is not a possessive noun. But let's look what happens when it is a possessive noun. The second sentence says, Rita's book is about baseball. That is possessive. And you can see that possessive here, I've got it written. And that's because of that apostrophe S. Now, this is where it starts to get kind of weird. Plural nouns can also have or show possession. In this case, several cities have baseball teams. There's no apostrophe. There's, that's not a possessive noun. Same as before, just read it. That's just the word cities. But what if I wanted to make cities possessive? This gets a little weird here, but with plural nouns, you want to add the apostrophe to the end of the sentence. That's C-I-T-I-E-S apostrophe. So in that case, this says these cities, teams, attract fans. So you could say Jacksonville, Miami. Those cities are the cities that attract fans. These cities, attract teams, attract fans. So... Jacksonville Jags, the Miami Dolphins. Those are the teams that attract fans. Now, the apostrophe. This apostrophe is so important. If you don't have an apostrophe, it can't show ownership. And it can also, with doing these apostrophe S sentences to show possession, you can save a lot of time when you're making sentences. John has a horse that is fast. That's fine. But why don't you just say, John's horse is fast. John has a horse. Has a is completely completely useless when you have J-O-H-N apostrophe S. 
saves time on your sentence writing, and now that you know how to write the possessive uh, nouns correctly, you'll be able to write that like that without even worrying, oh, am I doing this right? Again, it's just the word, when it's singular, there's only one John in there. It's just the word John, apostrophe S. And that tells you that whose horse is it? It's John's. So, here's another good pausable moment here. This is a great table to look at when it comes to figuring out where to put the apostrophe. Which noun? Where to put apostrophe? An example. So we'll start. All singular nouns not ending in S. Where do you put that apostrophe? You just add apostrophe S to the end. Some example, a girl. That becomes a girl's, spelled G-I-R-L apostrophe S. And again, you can go through those examples that I have here. Next, for plural. This is again kind of where it gets tricky. Plural nouns that end in S. You put the apostrophe at the end of the plural noun. Let's look at the Joneses. So, the Joneses car. It's just Joneses with an apostrophe at the end, and you know it goes at the end because it is a plural noun. Again, this is a great table to pause to see what it's saying and to get the full extent of how this pattern changes depending on if the noun is plural or singular. So that's all we got for this PowerPoint. Next time, we're going to be looking at a positive. If you thought this was confusing, you're in for a treat on day four because the positives are pretty straightforward. If this video, or if this content, the possessive nouns, was confusing, please feel free to watch this video again so you can get more out of it. There are practice Google, there's a practice Google form assignment up already for you to watch, so you can go ahead and uh, try your hand at that. If you get stuck on that, please feel free to contact me that email. I would be happy to help with any of that. This has been Mr. Dooley. This has been day three of ELA. I'll see you all in the next video.